They're in the gate. They're in the gate. Tom Durkin called races for 43 years, 24 of them in New York. He retired in 2014 and lives a completely contented life. Almost. And here it is! The 37-year wait is over! American Pharoah is finally the one! American Pharoah has won the Triple Crown! <laughs> yeah. I went to go with 23 Belmonts in a row, and I walk out of there, and what happens? A freaking guy wins a triple. <laughs> uh, and I'm listening to one of the traffic jam on, on 87 on the radio. Some other guy's calling it, Jesus Christ. <laughs> walks out of the booth first time, boom, he gets a triple. <laughs> the morning after American Pharaoh's historic Belmont, called by Larry Colmus, Tom Durkin conducted a race calling seminar at the Harness, yes, Harness Racing Hall of Fame. He owns Standard Reds. Later on in the show, you'll hear yours truly try calling a race. But first, lessons from the master. One thing I also want to, you to take away from, from this is the ability, such as I'm doing to you right now, to make a presentation. I don't care what you do in life. Uh, if you don't become a racetrack announcer, at least today, you're going to take away some basics about making a presentation to people. There are everybody. One, sooner or later, I don't care what your what your job is, uh, you're going to have to get up and, and speak to people in, in some way, make presentations. Everything that uh, race callers do uh, can be boiled down to, to something like that. Three main things. Three main things. Three pieces of advice that I'm going to give you. First of all, read. Read. I have a very good vocabulary, and it comes from reading. I don't care what you read. Just read. Uh, I read a book about uh, music, and I got all sorts of ideas about race music. It was called Understanding Music uh, by, uh, who's that talking heads guy? David, uh, David Burns, yeah. Very smart guy. And the next thing is energy. And the next thing after that is energy. <laughs> energy, energy, energy. I just can't drill that enough into your head about even, even saying that word energy, I'm starting to really feel it. And you have to have energy. In any presentation you make, race calling, you just have to have energy. I was an actor in college, that helped quite a bit. Uh, it saved me, uh, actually, uh, academically, because I, I had no interest in, in, in learning in college. I was just, I was John Bellucci and uh, Anna Moss. Yeah, I was crazy. <laughs> and in order to stay in school, uh, somebody said, try out for a play. I did. Became a, 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 got a lot of acting roles, and that's another reason why I'm so completely comfortable in front of you. But my teacher, Kelly Collum, just drilled that energy, energy, and from energy, comes creative energy, and from that creative energy comes new words, new ideas, different ways to try to explain things. It's ho brown horses running around in a circle. You can make that really, really exciting. You have to build tension and release. Uh, that's how drama works. So if you have to build the tension and then release. Part of it is almost uh, musical. So in Ravel's Bolero, this phrase starts out musically. Two things. The tempo is very slow. And the dynamics is very low. Dynamics is nothing more than how loud you speak. So you can start off a race fairly slowly. And then as the race starts to continue, you can increase your volume. And then you can really start to replace the, the tempo of the race before you come down. And your volume's getting very bigger without screaming, and the words are very, very close together. That's how you build tension and release. This is one of the uh, great inventions of my life. Uh, it is uh, made of the three most important uh, elements in construction. A clothes hanger, the cardboard paper you get from the uh, Chinese laundry in the back of your shirts, and 
duck or masking tape. <laughs> Simple enough. Just put it on like this and clip, there's a little clip here, and just clip it uh, in front of me. So call the race, blah, 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 and as will happen, almost in every race, uh, that name doesn't come immediately to mind, and I just go down, look down, oh, there's, okay, yeah, but I can see brown. Okay, the, oh, there's that brown, it's Octavate. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Harness racing and thoroughbred racing both have uh, saddle pads. Um, I pay no attention to them, none whatsoever, because in thoroughbred racing, those horses uh, run next to each other. If those jockeys are together, you cannot see uh, the saddle pads on the thoroughbred horse. So that's why I always memorize the uh, colors of the harness drivers as well as the saddle pad numbers. Uh, in thoroughbred racing, the jockeys are down like this. And so when, and it's okay when they're on the side, but when they turn for home, you're looking at them head on. Horses' faces full of mud, except for the front runner. Horses' faces full of mud. The top of that jockey's cap is full of mud. His arms are full of mud, and you can't see his back. So you have to get a mental picture before they make that turn into the stretch come at you. That's where your mistakes are really easily made. The top of the stretch. When you make that turn in and you're looking head on at them, that's the easiest place to make a mistake. So what I always did was to take a mental picture of that of those first few horses right outside the quarter pole before they made the turn. <laughs> what about like gear? Like if you could you memorize if a horse has you know a white bridle or a shadow yes. or pigmentation if a horse has, has a blaze or yeah, that I'll, 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 I'll certainly get into that, but we'll, we'll, we'll handle it right now. Uh. Love gray horses. You know, that's a freebie. Except after that, you go to other stuff. Blinkers are great. Blinkers are really, really great. Uh, and again, when I uh, did my markup, uh, let's say, you know, I've got uh, uh, John Campbell here, that's John Campbell, and then the horse is wearing green blinkers, so I would put those, some, that, that mark. Uh, on the side there like that. Uh, blinkers are very good. That's your second line. Hats are probably the third. Uh, they're generally in concert with the colors that the jockeys and the drivers have. So I put down on here uh, these numbers, 45 and 1 and 109 and 3 because uh, I was anticipating a fast uh, pace in that race. So I went to the record books and whatever and um, these are the numbers that equal the fastest uh, times, uh, splits. And um, sure enough, during that race, uh, it all I had to do was kind of peek down. If they went up, instead of like really memorizing all these arcane little facts, sometimes you can put the real important ones here, track records, stakes records, things like that. Uh, so I just put it at the bottom, and uh, sure enough, they went up and faster than 45 and 1, and I, I got to say, they're running at a record pace in the Kentucky Derby. Memorization is the one thing that sets race callers apart from other broadcasters. It's that ability to memorize. Uh, all sports broadcasters have a vocabulary. They all have a sense of drama, um, all that sort of stuff. Horse racing is just a sports broadcasting. But the twist with this broadcaster is that you have to memorize uh, the colors uh, and that's something that, that uh, even uh, Bob Costas couldn't do at first try. So I got in the habit of memorizing the horses the same way. So I don't have to think about memorizing them so much because it's the habit. And my habit was to take three horses at a time. Say that first horse horse's name three times. Maclobel, Maclobel, Maclobel. Pro, pro while looking at the image of the horse and the colors. Park Avenue Joe, Park Avenue Joe, Park Avenue Joe. Maclo Bell, Probe, Park Avenue Joe. Maclo Bell, Probe, Park Avenue Joe. Maclo Bell, Probe, Park Avenue Joe. Probe, Park Avenue Joe, Maclo Bell. Probe, Park Avenue Joe, Maclo Bell. Probe, Park Avenue Joe, Maclo Bell. Park Avenue Joe, Maclo Bell Prove, Park Avenue Joe, and do it in threes, in that sequence, always. And then it becomes habit. After it becomes habit, 
the, the memorization becomes much easier. And don't ever try to sound like anybody else. That, that's el boche de morte, the kiss of death. You can keep notes on your own race call. Self-criticism is the path to excellence. And again, this just does not apply to uh, horse race calling uh, anything. Uh, don't be afraid to be critical of yourself, but don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. You realize that you made a mistake, go on with it. Don't, don't beat yourself up. After the finer points of choosing binoculars and how to mark up a program, it was time to give race calling a try. These non-wagering harness races at the first ever harness track in Goshen, New York, are for standard breads trying to prove they can compete in races where they, and you, the betting public, can win money. And the crazy thing is there are actually people here, and I'm really going to do this. Only three horses entered my race, the opener on the card, as it turned out. Only three names to memorize. It is post time for the opener. And the gate is moving. Three two-year-old trotters ready for their career debuts. And they are trotting. As I believe dissertation may have gone off stride. And getting away from them right now is exactly supple too. Dissertation settles back in, in second, and it's a long way back to the one. With the crowd mic and binocs, I had no view of the program. Octave eight. Exactly supple two, Paul Moore guiding him past the stands for the first time. Dissertation and Chuck Connor settling back into a rhythm and getting a bit closer as they go into the second half of the race. Dissertation edges closer as they move along the back stretch for the final time. Exactly supple two continues to hold the lead. Here comes dissertation being produced on the outside by Chuck Connor Jr. And it'll be dissertation getting up in time to win, overcoming difficulty at the beginning. How'd I do? Good. Good. Yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, it's harder with uh, uh, basically only two horses. So that's that's hard to do. Uh, you're actually sometimes better off with uh, 15. <laughs> it's easier race to call. Remember, you can catch us on our YouTube channel by searching In The Gate Podcast. You can get us on the ESPN Radio app in the On Demand section by searching In The Gate or by going to TuneIn.com or the TuneIn app and searching In The Gate. And you can follow me on Twitter at B. Abrams Voice or on Facebook at Barry Abrams Voice. That's In The Gate for this week. I'm Barry Abrams. We'll see you next time.